You're watching Don Hudson, Kim Fisher, and Dan Pope. Good for Utah. An old medical theory renews itself as a cancer-fighting treatment. Yesterday, Good for Utah's Nadia Crow introduced us to hypothermia therapy, basically heating up cancer cells and killing them. Now, in the second part of this special report, we look at how it works. Good for Utah's Nadia Crow shows us the products built by Utah-based company Pyrexar and how they're keeping one man alive. A lot of the patients don't survive their cancers. That's obvious. That's the way cancer often works nowadays, and we're hoping to change that. Dr. Kurt Hess is a hyperthermia specialist at the Cancer Treatment Centers of America in Philadelphia, where he treats stage 4 pancreatic cancer patient Mark Haywood. He came to Dr. Hess after being given six months to live. When someone tells you that you have six months, sometimes you have like a movie moment, like you're dreaming, like this is not real. So I had my ups and downs. When I went to CTC, they made me feel a lot better. They gave me hope. That was a year and a half ago. A full year of life Mark wasn't expected to live. We interviewed Mark via Skype after three days of chemotherapy and hyperthermia therapy at CTC. His tumor isn't growing anymore. It was very simple, very easy. A lot of times I'd fall asleep um, during the process. Dr. Hess uses a machine designed by Utah-based Pyrexar to treat Haywood. The array treats them deep internally. So, you know, a heating pad goes a half an inch or a quarter of an inch. This device can go down to the very center of a person and give the heat uh, deep inside of them, but non-invasively. But you definitely sweat. They offer you uh, cold rags. They have some a cup with ice cubes there. Um, you're in this room, which is like a... Uh, it's like a microwave. And this more common machine targets cancer cells in other areas of the body. And the, uh, the system's capable basically to do superficial treatments of sites such as recurrent uh, breast cancer, chest wall, head and neck, melanoma, the things that tend to occur more on the surface of the body and it's used in combination with radiation therapy. On the screen, you can see the temperature controls used to customize care. So what's this uh, new technology we're looking at? This is our universal applicator for our 3D MR system. Those at Pyrexar believe its technology will revolutionize hyperthermia treatments and open the door to more cancer patients. Uh, advanced cervical cancer, bladder cancer, uh, colorectal cancer, soft tissue sarcomas. This applicator lid lifts up. The patient can lie down on the pads and the applicator. They'll place the temperature sensors as needed. The applicator lid closes. Just take a look at this animation. The water then fills in the boluses over the cancer-affected areas where hyperthermia is then administered. We can see the temperature rise during the treatment as we're heating to see if we're getting to the right temperature levels throughout the whole volume that's being treated in the patient. Only problem? It's only FDA approved for humanitarian advice exemption for advanced cervical cancer in conjunction with radiation therapy only. The hope is to get the FDA to reconsider. Haywood says if that happens, it'll mean all cancer patients could get all treatment options possible. The hypothermia machine, I think, has had the most impact, and I believe it works. That was Nadia Crow reporting. Now, throughout this series, Nadia also learned other countries are more advanced in hyperthermia therapy than the U.S. In the third part of the Turning the Heat on Cancer special, Nadia takes us to China, Germany, and Trinidad to show us the medical advancements made there. That's tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. You can also watch all of our Turning the Heat on Cancer stories at goodforutah.com. Time now.